Let's take a look at the total cost of ownership tool that comes from the EPA and also designed by some various different vendors. And what we use this TCO calculator for is uh, looking at um, IT expenditures and what their cost is over their entire life cycle. So there it comes with some directions which uh, don't really clear up a lot of things. So let's actually just walk through creating one of these. Let's click at the bottom on the TCO calculator tool. Now when you first open this up, if you see an option that says enable editing, make sure you click that enable editing uh, button. Otherwise you won't be able to type anything into any of these boxes. All right. So uh, let's take a quick look at all of the different categories here and then we'll actually fill one of these things out. Uh, you've got the general information area and it starts with the electricity rate and the number of units. Now when it comes to number of units uh, that can be a little bit confusing uh, when it shows uh, right next to the electricity rate. So really what this is is this is the number of computers that you're going to buy. So it has nothing to do with electricity. <laughs> All right, the next area here is the uh, product that you're going to be purchasing. And we're going to be uh, using the example today of a CPU or just a computer with the, an LCD monitor. It also gives you the option of computer with LCD monitor uh, with a four-year life as well as uh, LCD with a five-year life. And you could do a computer with a CRT monitor, which is the type of monitor that we don't really use so much anymore. So uh, we're going to be using one of these categories when we get to that point. Um, under the, You have a purchasing area here, which is the initial cost. That's just the cost of the, the products that you're buying. The expected service life, how many years do you plan on actually using it? Uh, then you have uh, operations and maintenance, such as training, and then the energy uh, consumption and cost. And don't worry about that. We'll walk you through that as well. Uh, then you have monitors as far as what the cost of the monitors are to run. And then uh, you have uh, other things like here where it says uh, notebooks, power consumption, and things, things like that as far as uh, this, this, is a lap, if this was a laptop purchase. And you have the uh, annual cost or consumption. Uh, the, you know, what's the actual cost of this device at the end of uh, the amount of years that you're going to be using the device or the, using the computer? All right, so you've got trade-in value, et cetera, et cetera. And at the very end, we have the uh, TCO for everything. This includes uh, the cost of buying the computer, maintaining the computer, and then disposing of the computer. So we're covering everything from the minute you buy it to the minute you stop using it. All right, let's go ahead and start at the top. We're going to just choose one unit here. All right, let's start with the electricity rate. So the default here is about 10 cents uh, per uh, kilowatt hour. Now, you can check your electric bill if you want, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and choose the default 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, let's go on to the next one, which is number of units. So we're going to do this particular experiment with one laptop. We're going to be buying, that's also called a notebook, but we're going to call it a laptop here. Uh, so we're going to be buying one. So we're just going to put in a unit of one. Now, as far as our scenario goes, we've got a lot of different options. We've got uh, the computer plus LCD and then the computer plus CRT. So we're going to choose the um, computer plus LCD uh, with Energy Star. That's what the ES stands for, uh, for your life. And then we're going to donate it at the end. So basically what this is going to be is it's going to be a, a laptop with an external LCD. So we end up with two screens, which is a pretty normal scenario for, for nowadays. If you're using a server, you could uh, you also use this particular category. So um, you would just put in the cost of the server and then uh, plus the cost of the LCD, etc. All right, so since we're doing a laptop, we're going to say that our cost is going to be $800. Now, we bought some Microsoft uh, Office software to go with this, uh, and that particular Office software, we're just going to say, uh, cost $250. We decided to go ahead and buy a, an extended service contract with the vendor, 
and the, we're just going to estimate that cost here as an additional $100. All right, we're going to move on to administrative costs. Now, these particular costs uh, could be costs that you paid your employees to evaluate the computer, to make sure it's the right one uh, for your particular business, uh, that kind of thing. So if you paid someone to look at all this, you might even be a third party to evaluate these things for you. Uh, let's just go ahead and say that that costs $200. All right, set up an installation. So uh, someone's got to set this computer up, meaning you know when you first unbox the computer, you're, there's a lot more to this uh, than just uh, turning the computer on. You actually have to pay either your own employee or a third-party company to go in and, and uh, set up and install it for your particular image. And so let's just put that in at $300. We won't put in anything under other, but you certainly can if you want. So right now we're at a total of $1,650 and still counting. All right, let's take a look at the uh, expected service life. We're going to go ahead and say that that's four years. That seems to be a pretty uh, average amount of time, although your particular company may use something longer or shorter than that. Now you've got to train the employee because you've got some new software that came with this computer and you've got to train them on how to use it. So uh, the training on this, let's just say you brought in a third party training person and you trained uh, maybe a room full of people all at once, try to get the cost down, and you divided that, say, $3,000 worth of training uh, divided by 10 people, so it costs $300 per computer. And again, your amounts may differ. Let's look at the uh, maintenance and support. So you're going to pay either an employee or a third party company to come in and maintain and support that computer. If you don't do that, then the actual total cost, cost of ownership goes in much higher. It, it, so you want to make sure that you pay uh, for maintenance and support. And we're going to estimate that um, is going to be $50 a month. And we're going to take that $50 a month and we're going to multiply that times 48 months and it's going to be twenty four hundred dollars all right now this is where things get a little bit fuzzy you've got your desktop uh, processing modes you've got power consumption and things like that you've got your monitors and then you've got your notebook so you have to decide you know which of these three or combination of which of these three that you actually got now in our case we're saying we took a notebook which is a laptop so we're just going to skip the desktop processing unit area if you have a server then this is definitely something you want to fill out now we do have a monitor and we do have a notebook or a laptop so let's go ahead and fill that part out and again we're just doing this first column because that's the one we chose uh, so if you have someone go out and uh, actually check this information you might find that these numbers are different but we're going to go with off, off on the right hand side we're going to go uh, with what the recommended uh, one is that energy star and various different people have gone and already done the work for you so we're going to use uh, the conventional uh, LCD amount of wattage, and that's going to be 32.2 watts. So let's go ahead and put in 32.2. All right, and you've got sleep and standby mode. So we're going to go again with the conventional of 0.7 watts. So we're going to type in 0.7. And once again, we'll choose the same and that's 0.7 in off mode percentage of units turned off at night so we'll take a look at that and typically 18 percent so we'll put in 18 percent of power managed and we're going to go ahead and say 81 percent so 81 percent there but again you could do this yourself and find different numbers percent of sleep uh, in sleep uh, percent of time in sleep during the work day we'll use this recommended since energy star works so hard for us already and we're going to say that uh, 56 percent is what we have all right our annual unit energy consumption is uh, 72 kilowatt hours per year and uh, if you recall up at the top it's 10 cents per kilowatt hour so now we're getting an idea of what our, our cost is so let's take a look at our uh, default energy unit uh, consumption and it says energy star qualified uh, is uh, let's see here let's go with conventional again just to be on the conservative side so that's 73 
Let's go down to where it says notebook. And under notebook, we have power consumption and active idle mode. Let's just go ahead and continue on with all these uh, different ones using the conventional uh, um, uh, amounts and percentages. And I'll just go ahead and fill those in so we can fast forward a little bit. All right, I've gone ahead and filled in basically the same information that we did for the monitor. I did this for the notebook or the laptop, and we see that it's going to cost $141 a year uh, to uh, pay for the electricity on this particular laptop. All right, let's move on to power management. Now, power management is something that a company might purchase in order to manage. Uh, it's, it's software you'd purchase to manage the... Um, unit power consumption. Most companies don't do this, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip it, but if you uh, want to do that, then you just have to add up what your cost is for this power management and then put it in here for the cost per unit and then it'll, it'll add that up for you. All right, so you have equipment upgrade for internal reuse. So if you're upgrading hardware or software, uh, then you can uh, put those costs in there. Uh, we're not doing an upgrade. We're doing a new purchase with new software. So we're going to go ahead and leave this blank as well. But it's nice that that is in there for you to use. Uh, other options and maintenance. Uh, so if you can think of anything else that maybe wasn't covered in a previous uh, category, you can go ahead and put that in here now. I'm going to go ahead and put in $150 because on occasion the uh, the notebook is going to be maybe infected with the virus or is going to have an update happen that maybe didn't go well and it's going to need to be fixed. So I'll just go ahead and put in $150 for that. Now let's move on to when the product is at end of life. There is a cost to this, so we need to make sure that we have this covered. So the first thing is going to be the administrative overhead cost. This is going to be the cost of what it's going to uh, take to basically shut down this unit uh, separately from all the other tasks that are going on. So you have to do inventory management and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and put in the $25, which is the recommended uh, off to the right here. And you have removing equipment uh, from the desktop. So basically you have to uh, go in and unplug everything, the peripherals and, and things like that. Uh, this is saying basically that you have $8.75 per unit to pay an, an employee to go in and just unplug everything. Let's just go ahead and put in $9 just to make it easier. Uh, then you've got to back up the hard drive if you have anything that's on there that's important. And uh, you can back that up, to, of course, to the server or to a USB drive. doesn't uh, cost very much, but let's just go ahead and put in uh, the $12, which is about the cost that they're recommending. Then you have media sanitization. So that's uh, basically going in and uh, erasing the hard drive, making sure that no one else can get access to that old data. So let's again put in another $12. Uh, you now have uh, refurbish or upgrade equipment. Uh, this is including the hardware costs and labor. This would be reloading the operating system uh, in case you're donating the equipment, uh, which is the, our scenario. So you want to uh, reinstall the, the uh, software, which is a fairly quick thing to do, especially if you have uh, a laptop that all you have to do is press F11 and it reloads all of the software for you, which is really nice. So we'll go ahead and put in $9 for that. Uh, and the reason you want to do this is you don't want to, to donate a computer that has no operating system on it or has an operating system that uh, already has data on there that you don't want people to see. So uh, that's what the cost of that is. Uh, storage includes cost of storage um, for X amount of months. Uh, plus labor costs of pulling information storage and taking out of storage. Uh, so this really could uh, vary, you know, as far as uh, your costs go. It depends on if you have older or newer storage, or if you have off-site storage or on-site storage. Um, so let's just go ahead and put in $50 here. But again, yours may vary. Uh, then you got to pack up the computer before you send it off. So we're going to go ahead and um, put in, uh, oh, let's say... Uh, well, it says here about $5 a unit, so we'll go ahead and do that. Then you've got to ship it off, and there's a cost to ship that off. Uh, so let's go ahead and put in $25 for that. Uh, then you may have to provide support for, to the person you're donating the computer to. But since you're giving them a wiped computer, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank. Uh, recycling and disposal fees. This is definitely something you want to keep in mind. Uh, they recommend $40 per unit. We'll go ahead and put that in. So there is a cost, uh, you know, for doing that as well. 
uh, outsourcing, any of the above. So uh, they're recommending $48.25 includes the sanitization, the three-pass DOD. So it's sometimes it's not just erasing the media. You also need to do the DOD uh, standard, which is uh, three passes on there. And so let's just go ahead and put in $48 for that. Now, some in some cases, this is an either or. It's not necessarily an and. So we have media sanitization here. We have uh, you know uh, some of these other things here, recycling disposal fees. You may not be doing both of these. You might be doing one or the other. So just keep that in mind that uh, you don't want to pile on the costs here if you're doing one instead of the other. All right, you have revenues here. Uh, possibly, if you're uh, reselling the the product and that kind of thing, we're not. We're just going to leave that blank since we're donating it. And in case you have any other costs, uh, you can put those in as well. So let's look at our total cost. We finally got to the bottom of this thing. Our total cost per unit is going to be almost five thousand dollars for our laptop that only costs eight hundred dollars. Uh, the annualized cost per unit is going to be about twelve hundred dollars. So um, you have to keep that in mind when you're buying a whole bunch of laptops or, or computers and uh, so your total cost of ownership is four thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars so that's how you use the uh, EPA provided total cost of ownership for the life cycle of electronic equipment